Okay, so I'm re-recording this video. I'm very disappointed because I already recorded this video yesterday. It was like 20 minutes long. I had three examples um, to go over with you guys. I published it and there was no sound. So I've tried all day today to reload that video. It's not working. So I have to do this again from scratch, which is totally okay, but slightly disappointing. So let's go ahead and go over this the best I can. I'm gonna try to make this video a little bit shorter for two reasons. One, I'm not feeling my best. I have a cold and I'm just really feeling it right now, you guys. And two, I'm hoping that by keeping the video a little bit shorter, when I do upload it, um, the sound will be there. If you guys have any tricks for me, I'm still learning YouTube, so to upload things and make sure it has the sound. So again, the reason why I'm um, making these videos is because I'm trying to do a more in-depth tutorial for these questions on the advanced AccuPlacer test. So I'm going to go through the problem and then I'm going to do two example problems after it that are similar so that we can practice what we're learning. All right, so the question says, which of the following is an equation of the line that passes through the point zero, zero and is perpendicular to the line shown above? So this problem is asking us to have an equation of a new line. So the equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus b. The m stands for the slope and the b stands for the y-intercept. So if you want to identify a y-intercept, a y-intercept is just a point, just a regular point, but the x is always zero and the y is a number. So a y-intercept could be zero comma four, zero comma zero, zero comma negative two. We know that it's the y-intercept because it starts with a zero. And so if someone said, well, what is the y-intercept? You would just use the second number. So in this case, the y-intercept is 4. In this case, the y-intercept is 0. And in this case, the y-intercept is negative 2. So if I were to enter this into an equation based on the y-intercept, whatever that second number is, is what I would enter in the equation for b. So now that we have that extra information, let's go ahead and look at what they give us. They told us that this new line passes through the point zero, zero. Well, because it's zero comma zero, I know that this is the y-intercept. How? Because the x is zero. Whenever the x is zero, we're talking about the y-intercept. So if I want to include the y-intercept into an equation to represent it, I would put it in for b. And again, what number would I enter in for b? That second number, which is zero y is equal to mx plus zero because zero is the y-intercept. Now it's saying that we have to figure out what the slope is going to be. So we have to put in a value for m. Once we get the slope entered in and once we get the y-intercept in, we have our equation. So it's saying that this new line is perpendicular to this line. So the way that we find out what the slope of this new line will be is first we find out what the slope is of this line and then we figure out what a perpendicular line would have a slope as. So how to find the slope? You just go from one point to the next point and you have to figure out what do I have to do in order to get there. So to go from this point to this point, you go down one, two, three, four. So you go down four, and then you go over one, two, three, four, five. So the slope is negative four over five, because that's what it takes to go from one point to the next, down four over five. So if we're talking about a line that's parallel to this line, it is going to have the opposite slope, because a parallel line is going, a uh, perpendicular line, I'm sorry, is gonna cross through that original line in the opposite direction. So it's gonna be an opposite slope. So what that means is the sign is gonna be the opposite. So because this is a negative, it's going to be positive 
and then it's going to flip these numbers around. So instead of 4 over 5, it's going to be 5 over 4. So the slope of a perpendicular line is going to be positive 5 over 4. So now all we have to do is enter into our equation our slope. So y is going to be equal to 5 over 4x plus 0. And that's the equation of our new line. If we look at these, it's not going to be c or d because they have the wrong slope. And it's not going to be b because it has the wrong y-intercept. It's going to be a because it says that the slope is 5 over 4. And it's saying that there is a 0 here. So the y-intercept is 0. So the answer is going to be A. Now, if you feel a little bit lost, that's okay. That's why we have two more practice problems to go over together where we will apply the same skills that we just learned, but just in another way. All right, so the question is, which of the following is an equation of a line that runs through the point 0, 2 and is perpendicular to the line graphed above? So we're finding an equation of a new line. So we start by writing the equation of lines y equals mx plus b. We have to find a slope and we have to find a y-intercept. Well, it already tells us what the y-intercept is going to be. 0 comma 2. Why is that the y-intercept? Because this x is 0. Anytime we have a point with the x is 0, we know that that's the y-intercept. So then what number do we enter in for b? We enter in that second number of the y-intercept, 2. So y is going to be equal to mx plus 2. Now we have to figure out what the m is, or the slope. So we have to figure out the slope of this line in order to find out the slope of a perpendicular line. How do we find the slope? We go from one point to another. So you go down 2, negative 2, over 1. Negative 2 over 1. That is the slope of this line, down 2 over 1. So a perpendicular line would be going in the opposite direction in order to cross over that line and form a 90 degree angle. So what is the opposite of negative two over one? The opposite of a negative is a positive, and then you switch the numbers upside down. The two would go on the bottom, the one goes on the top. So the po uh, it would be a positive one half slope. So we put that into the equation. Y is equal to one half x plus 2. And that would be our equation. Well done. But we have one more problem to go over. And it's a very important skill that we're going to learn. Because instead of talking about perpendicular lines, we're going to talk about parallel lines. Now, the only difference between a perpendicular line and a parallel line is perpendicular lines cross over the line and is the opposite. Parallel lines are actually the same. They run in the same direction, side by side, so they have the same slope when they're parallel. So the only difference from what we've been doing in the last two problems and this one is instead of finding the opposite slope, a parallel line is going to have the same slope. So let's go ahead and read the problem. Which of the following is an equation of a line that runs to the point 0, 6 and is parallel to the line graphed above? We're going to go ahead and we're going to write the equation y is equal to mx plus b. 0, 6 is going to be our slope. I'm um, sorry, 0, 6 is our y-intercept. We know because it has a point with a 0 as x. We're going to input the second number, the 6, as the y-intercept. y is equal to mx plus 6. And then we're going to find the slope of this line. So you go up to 1, 2. So up to over 2, okay? Up to over 2, up to over 2. So this line that is parallel is going to be running in the exact same direction. It's never going to cross over because it has the same slope. So this is going to have a slope of positive 2 over 2. But we can also reduce that. And the way that we can reduce that is 2 over 2 is the same as saying 2 divided by 2, which is just equal to 1. So it has a slope of 1. y is equal to 1x plus 6. I'm going to end the video here, and I'm going to upload it, and I'm going to hope that you guys can hear it this time. 
please watch this video and enjoy. I'm so sorry, I'm just not feeling well, but I do promise to continue to upload as many videos as possible with not only the original practice problem, but also two supplementary questions so that you guys can really practice. I heard your feedback on the other video about needing a little bit more with these questions. So I'm trying to get that to you guys. And I hope you guys will continue to follow me and I'll see you in the next one. Stay well.